This is flying. The wind in your face, strapped in a seat with nothing around and beneath you but space. Looking down to the mountains and desert thousands of feet below, you feel like an aerial gypsy just as the early barnstormers. Join our four pilots as they fly their squadron of ultralight wings on an aerial odyssey, a journey along the High Sierra Mountains to the Great Basin and back in less than a week. Experience the thrill and exhilaration of soaring free. Discover how air trekking is within your reach. After filming sport aviation for so many years all over the world, I wanted to have an adventure right here in my own backyard. In choosing a team to join me, I wanted experienced mountain pilots who were also good at thermaling. Jerry Charlebois and his Hawaiian Flyers were perfect candidates. I had flown with them before and I knew they would be up to the challenge. Well, I'm from Kauai, Hawaii. Part of the new team of the Flying Hawaiians. And uh, I have a trike business on the island of Kauai. We uh, put about 2,000 people in the air every year, approximately maybe 5% can go on to become trike pilots. Between myself and, and Armin on Maui, we, uh, we turn a lot of people on to triking, and we have a ball doing it. Well, Jerry Charlie Boy from Kauai called me up a couple of months ago, and he said, let's, hey, Armin, let's go and do a trip on the mainland. Let's fly trikes on the mainland for six, 700 miles. I'm in for it. Educate the public a little bit what beautiful flying machines we actually fly. Well, I write guidebooks in Hawaii. Um, I first got into trikes because I reviewed a, a Jerry at Birds in Paradise. I became unbelievably smitten with trikes. And I'd grown up around aviation, and nothing had ever bit me like trikes bit me. Well, I think that these kind of trips, number one, if for a pilot, are invaluable. You get a, a huge variety of flying conditions, of terrain, of weather, of wind. Uh, by the time you're done with a trip like this, you will be a better pilot. You gotta come out and do this. Uh, this, is, this is what being a pilot's all about. The journey begins in Carson City, Nevada, and will take us south into the desert, and then down the High Sierra to Mount Whitney. From Mount Whitney, the highest point in the continental United States, on to Death Valley, the lowest point, thus the name top to bottom. The return route will take us north through the Nevada desert, back to the High Sierra and on to Lake Tahoe, ending where the journey began in Carson City. Our trek will cover approximately 1,000 miles in six consecutive days of flying with 16 stops to rest and refuel. In the end, 1,400 total air miles will be logged on the global positioning system. At sunrise on day one, the sky looks threatening. 
the weather appears to be holding, so we make the decision to leave as planned. calm and cold as we climb to 12,000 feet. We set our sights on the first fuel stop in Yarrington. With a tailwind, there's plenty of fuel to go on to the next stop in Hawthorne. Leaving Yarrington and crossing over the pass to Walker Lake, the sky clears and the air warms. This was the first chance to skim along the shore of a lake, which will become a favorite ritual throughout our trip. Landing in Hawthorne, Nevada, the ground crews are only 15 minutes behind. Perfect timing. Since the flying conditions are nice, we'll take students along on the next leg. The chase crew is eager to become students now that our check flights have gone off without a hitch. A high ridge looms ahead. With the added weight of the students, plus the high density altitude, climb rates are reduced Finding and staying in the rising air column will be needed to climb. This is a skill the pilots have developed during their early hang gliding experiences. You can determine where the strongest lift is and circle in that rising column of air. You can feel the core of the thermal as it nudges up your wing on the side of the strongest lift. You bank it up and crank a turn into the elevator to the sky. This is the first time on the trip where thermaling skills are necessary to make headway. At the top of our climb, Mono Lake is in sight. Mono Lake is a journey into an ageless dimension, a place of multicolored waters and shorelines. Step aside, pull it all together. Raise the roof and make it come together. Search your soul and go with what you're feeling. No time to waste, gotta make the best of living. As we pull away from the lake, the air is bumpy as the high noon desert thermals kick off and start knocking us around. It's back to the real world of sagebrush and air textures. We'll head straight for the airport and not battle the gushing air. At the end of a long day one, we've achieved our goal. Now it's time for a power nap to recover from the early morning takeoff. On an afternoon side trip to the ghost town of Bodie, our aerial explorers are transformed back to the Old West, where the gold rush drew people across the West in search of their own dreams. Our odyssey would not be possible if it wasn't for the complete crew and the woman behind the camera. I've been driving chase support and filming Paul's hang gliding and paragliding adventures for years. One of my greatest thrills was hang gliding to 16,000 feet overlooking Lake Tahoe. Now with the trike, I can easily be in the air and experience the thrill firsthand all of the time. This odyssey is an opportunity to add to my knowledge and skill as a student pilot. The sky is cloudy with vertical development and wind clouds over the mountains. Today, we'll leave the students behind because of the potentially ugly air. On takeoff, the air is turbulent and unpredictable. Far ahead in the distance, though, to the southwest, clear sky. Wrestling the trikes through the turbulent air, our group heads south. 
That's my part. I pull the strings. I just lays the lid on the eye. The truth grows in. settles down and becomes smoother, more enjoyable. A long straight climb to 13,000 feet brings us to the High Sierra. What a treat! The air is smooth over the majestic snow-capped mountains. As we fly along the Sierra, Bishop Airport will be our next stop for refueling. As we come into the airport, we'll need to obey airport frequency and pattern information as our group lines out and lands. Bishop is a good stop for some maintenance and gas. <music> Flying back to the mountains from Bishop is a long leg since the Owens Valley is one of the largest in the world. At this point, everyone's becoming more comfortable flying in tight formations. Another flight to the High Sierra to head south and acclimate to the high altitude mountain flying. We can see Independence Airport. We'll stop there for refueling. Independence is within federal military operations airspace. It's okay to fly here, but keep an eye out for fighter jets flying fast and low. From Independence, we head for the top, climbing nearly two vertical miles toward Mount Whitney. Mount Whitney is deep in the Sierra. After using the thermals, we conquer it. At 14,000 feet, the bitter cold made everyone anxious to return to lower altitudes and warm up. Tonight, the students get to fly. I met Andy first. Okay. And Andy told me he would take me up for one flight. He took me for the first flight. Then I met Jerry. And that was it, out of my trike. And they get sink. 
and thermals is the main two things of flying, and you better get on GPS when you fly. <laughs> A local with a spirit of adventure is treated to a thrill she only imagined for years. Okay. We're ready to go. The whole thing's here is if I want to go faster, pull in. If you want to go to the right, I pull just like a shopping cart. Just like that, go to the right. Go to the left, we can stay in there. better than a plane, it's softer, it's easier, it's just, I don't know, it's just awesome, is that the word I'm looking for? It's great. <laughs> God, I can see why you get addicted. I just, I, I could do that over and over and over again. This morning, the air is calm and conditions look good. This is the day to fly to the bottom. Death Valley. The first leg takes us across Owens Lake, over the mountain pass to Death Valley National Park and the Panamint Valley sand dunes. In the Panamint Valley, the hard, dry lake bed is perfect for a fuel stop. Now it's time for a long climb using the thermals to get over the Panamint Range to Stovepipe Wells Airport in Death Valley. At high noon, Death Valley is over 100 degrees. Everyone's dressed for the cold at 12,000 feet. From the top, We've hit the bottom. Wheels down, mission accomplished. But now everyone's eager to get back to altitude to stop the overheating. We have enough gas for the next leg. To get out of Death Valley and over the mountain range, we need a 7,000 foot vertical climb. Strong thermal currents are booming up from the hot desert floor. We rock it up in the thermal columns. Beatty, Nevada is in sight.
Back at the airport for the evening student flights, a terrible gust front blows through and nearly destroys our trikes. So we've really been lucky when it comes to the weather. The only exception was when we almost lost our trikes. That was probably one of the most difficult things. The wind came in about 60 or 70 miles an hour like that. Five minutes earlier, we had contemplated actually giving somebody a lesson. And in five minutes, the wind came in and started howling. And we almost lost our trikes. It took all of our strength to hold on to the trikes while the fierce wind and the rain and the hail was just pelting us. Uh, that was a scary time. That was more scary than any time I've been in my trike was when I was outside holding my trike. Sorry, we're late. We're on Hawaiian time. <laughs> We took the wings down the night before because of the gust front. Now it's time to set them back up and get out of baiting. Yeah. Yeah. Our group is intent on getting out of the desert and back to the snow-capped mountains. So we set a course to fly to the Sierra and land at Mammoth Airport. The north wind is blowing right in our face. It's okay to take off in, but it's going to slow down the long flight ahead. Out of Beatty, we compare the GPS speed with the airspeed. The numbers look good. The winds of Beatty are behind, and the air now is turning smooth and motionless. Just north of Beatty is the highly restricted airspace of Area 51. The Odyssey flight path takes us within less than a mile. This area is famous for alien sightings and top secret military projects. This is airspace where you can be shot down without question. The aeronautical map clearly shows the boundary. It's been noted and we'll avoid it. When we were heading out north out of Beatty, my temperature was reading a little high, my water temperature. There was no landing fields, but there's this long stretch of highway, 15 miles long. There was no cars at all. We just landed right there on the highway, pulled it off on the side. Everybody else came in because we were flying in a group. I was actually missing a little bit of water in my radiator. So we let it cool down. We waited about 15, 20 minutes, and all of a sudden this day trooper came by. And he had his blue lights flashing. He told us he was coming up with 120 miles an hour. Maybe one of the biggest challenges on this whole trip was talking our way out of this, out of getting a ticket. Uh, but it, then he was, turned out really nice. He cleared the highway for us, and we, was a, we were able to take off from the highway again. So it was pretty challenging convincing a state trooper to get us take off from the highway again. On to Lida Junction to refuel and bring on students. This is an airport for one of Nevada's infamous houses of prostitution. These types of airstrips are located throughout Nevada. A quick refuel stop for the party. From Lida Junction, one long flight across three mountain passes back to Bishop and on to the destination of Mammoth Airport. Taking off at Lida Junction, the team again has to thermal up to get over the pass. Once over the first pass, the high altitude is maintained to save fuel.
Mammoth Airport is at over 7,000 feet. In the middle of this day, the air is hot and turbulent with a high density altitude. High density altitude means the air is thinner, so your actual speed over the ground is faster. Landing here is the same as landing in an airport at over 12,000 feet. Mammoth Airport has smartly dressed terminal associates in golf carts to escort us to our assigned tie downs. Ah, the good life. Mammoth Hot Springs is perfect to relieve the tensions of our arduous flight. Jets of scalding hot water gush up into the fresh mountain stream. It's up to you to locate the comfortable mix of hot and cold. Today we're in Mammoth Lakes, California. As you can see the mountain range back here, it is a beautiful day. Those peaks are uh, 12,500 foot high. We've got some locals, Alana and Sarah. Are you guys all ready to go flying? Oh, Let's yeah. go. Let's okay, go. I think we should get in the air. We're going flying! <laughs> got everything we need. Got our chemical hand warmers, expose them to oxygen and they stay toasty. Got one camera. Got two cameras. We came up over where the skiers were and everybody's looking up and gawking and it was just so close. Like one or two dives, but that was like enough to get your adrenaline going. I'm sold. <laughs> I've seen a lot of, lot of things here I've never seen before. More lakes and just uh, beautiful peaks and uh, it's breathtaking. If anything, I really wasn't afraid. I really wasn't. The demo flights are behind us. Now it's time to make some progress. We set a course north to fly by Yosemite and on to the next fuel stop at Levini. Be on your left, Jerry. Mammoth Lakes uh, traffic, uh, three micro lights departing on runway 27, midfield.
Beyond Mammoth, the air is generally choppy near June Lake. We again need the thermal to get high enough to see Yosemite. At 15,000 feet, the temperature is 30 degrees. Several in the team have face shields fogging and we're noticing the lack of oxygen to the brain. After a nice view of Yosemite, it's now time to descend to the warmth of the lower altitudes. The cold, the lack of oxygen, and turbulence through the Tioga Pass Canyon have fatigued the crew. Everyone's anxious to take a rest, but with growing instability of the air, and the possibility of the afternoon west winds kicking in, we take a short fuel stop at Levining Airport. We can see you. I'm, take, I'm just taking off right here. Over Mono Lake, the air turns magically calm. Cruising around and seeing the reflections of the clouds and the snowy mountains off the glassy lake, that was fantastic. That was gotta be the, the highlight of the trip for me. Flying, flying low over a, a lake like Mono Lake can be really difficult. You have a really odd perspective of how far off the water you really are. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever encountered. Hey, you guys, you two stay right there. Let me come that way.
clouds are building with rain and lightning ahead. Our pilots are wrestling with their wings in the wicked turbulence with hopes that weather in Bridgeport will be clear. Lightning is ahead, but how far ahead? The ground crews radio that it's clear in Bridgeport, but rain and lightning are fast approaching. It's a race to see who can get to the airport first, the pilots or the storm. Full throttle and at high speed, everyone drops to the deck. Another day with threatening weather at the airport. It's a race to get the gliders lowered and tied down before anything else can come in and threaten the trikes. Who we'll dust it? Oh, yeah, dusty. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> at Bridgeport Hot Springs, we soothe our tensions from the stormy flight. It's an oasis high on the mountainside, providing a panoramic view of the lush valley and the jagged Sawtooth Range. The early morning is calm, so the students take the flight north. Bridgeport is so green, the huge meadow sits at the base of the Sierra with desert on its fringes. Left wing, you want us on your left side? I've got the camera on my right wing, I want you guys on my left side. Uh, Everyone enjoys the tranquil air of the final day. Up the East Walker River Valley and back to the edge of the Great Basin Desert again. The large irrigation fields are amusing, as well as educational. The students fly steady turns following the pattern of the fields. Over the pass to refuel at an airport marked unidentified on the aviation sectional map, this is a perfect place to refuel and experience a bit of history. at the airfield. I'll just stay right at the intersection. The wind is calm. Just keep coming to the west.
Good job, cowboy. Having a hell of a time. You wanna come? Out catching bugs. <laughs> Sam. Hi, Hi Sam. 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 All right, guys. From Maui, Hawaii. So they actually, this is World War II. It was a World War II auxiliary field, and they had how many? How many? They, had, they used, you know, during World War II, they dispersed the airplanes, and they parked uh, B-25s here. Huh. You saw the south end. There was kind of a little turnaround uh, just before it breaks down huh. there. Like, well, we can, uh, so they used to the park the 25s up and down here. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's uh, fuel. Carson City, Nevada. It's 32 miles. Which there are. <laughs> <laughs> I got the small tank. I want to be full. And I'm carrying state. Topaz is the last desert lake. Everyone wants to assemble for the final shoreline skim. It's sad to know this will be the last. To climb out over the pass, thermaling is again necessary. Lake Tahoe is the next landmark on our final leg. As we approach our final airport in Carson City, there's an air show going on. We're diverted to the north and enter the airport when instructed. Watch the lights, low pass, dirt runway. The air at Carson Airport is always bumpy and was especially so today. A low pass for the air show, and the journey is complete. Yeah, good work. Stuff, cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked the GPS. 1,400 miles. Wow. Right on. Really? 1,400 miles? 1,400 miles. The Odyssey is complete. Now it's time for reflection on the magnitude of this accomplishment. Before you are another year older, Plan your own odyssey, relive the thrills and excitement of the early barnstormers so you too can say, this is flying. Aside, pull it all together, raise the roof and make it come together. Search your soul and go with what you're feeling, no time to wait.